Hello, my name is Justin Hall, and I'm a cartoonist that's been making uh, queer historical work for uh, many years now. I, I recently did a series of comic book posters uh, for the bus kiosks along Market Street in San Francisco, uh, detailing and illustrating queer history in San Francisco from 1955 to 1970, uh, the start of the first Pride celebrations. Uh, and so I'll be doing a reading from the uh, from one of those posters, uh, specifically the one that is um, uh, that tells the story of the, the founding of the Toolbox Bar, which was the first leather bar in uh, the South of Market District of San Francisco, which has become known, of course, as an international um, place for, for leather culture. Uh, this is an example of this is uh, of one of the posters that was actually up. Um, this is actually a, a proof of the poster. A printer's proof, so it's only about half the size that it was actually printed at and displayed within the bus kiosk. So you can see how large these, these uh, comic books were, uh, comic book pages were being printed at. Uh, but I will be doing a slideshow now from that work. So with no further ado, Toolbox by Justin Hall. Leather culture developed out of the biker scene that flourished in post-World War II America. Queer men created their own motorcycle clubs and queer male artists helped solidify a hyper-masculine aesthetic and sexual identity that was in opposition to the camp stylings of majority gay culture. The first San Francisco bar dedicated to leather was The Why Not, which opened on Ellis Street in 1961. It was quickly supplanted by the toolbox, which opened the next year at 4th and Harrison, establishing the South of Market or Soma uh, neighborhood as one of the world's leading epicenters of leather culture. Within a few years, many bars, bathhouses, and clubs populated Soma's Miracle Mile, along with nightly crowds of men on bikes and in black leather and denim. In 1964, Life magazine published the landmark story, Homosexuality in America the first time the subject was covered by a major publication in such a way. It was a deeply flawed and bigoted piece, but it included a double page spread of the inside of the toolbox and claimed San Francisco as the gay capital of the country. Uh, uh, hello, can I get a beer please? Sure thing, buddy, new here, huh? Yeah, I just got in yesterday, uh, uh, how could you tell? You got that wide-eyed look of a guy who just walked into a gay bar full of bikers for the first time. At least you got the right outfit on. If you'd walked in with sneakers instead of boots, they could have wound up in that bundle hanging from the ceiling. Wow. Uh, I, I mean, I've, I've just been really looking forward to being here. Let me guess. You saw that Life magazine article and knew you needed to move to San Francisco, along with thousands of other guys. Yeah, uh, it was that photo with all those manly guys in front of the sexy mural. Well, I was in that photo and I painted the mural. What, seriously? Name's Chuck Arnett. I've been making art for the other leather bars popping up too. You should see the leather David my buddy Mike Caffey is making for the new place, Phoebe's. We're trying to build something here in SF, a, a haven for men like us. Ever since I came home from the war, I've been searching for the kind of brotherhood I used to have in, in the Navy. Well, well, you won't get dishonorably discharged for that here, but you could still be thrown in jail. You never know when we might have vice in here. Now, that's why we have monitors by the restrooms. There are a lot of other vets in here. Tons of guys disembarked in San Francisco and never left. Found a new home among their brothers here. You a vet too? Nah, I was a dancer. I worked all over until I got sick of it and rode my bike out here in 1960. You still got a, a dancer's body, Chuck. You keep in shape. I do my best. After all, I'm on my feet all day running drinks for grunts like you. I hope you get a chance to get your feet up at night. Oh yeah, don't you worry. Say, my buddies and I have a place by Dolores Park. We throw after parties when the bar closes. There aren't any rules against men touching each other at our place, that's for sure. That sounds amazing. Say, can I get a ride with you? I'll give you a ride anywhere you want to go, handsome. 
Chuck Arnett, Mike Caffey, and their friends helped define the early San Francisco leather scene with their art, their parties, and their presence. They also did costume design for the SF Ballet and contributed to the art of the hippie movement that took off in the city during the summer of love. Chuck Arnett died of AIDS in 1988. The toolbox closed in 1971 and other bars took up the mantle. The building was mostly demolished, but for two years, the mural was still intact and visible from the street. Its men looked down at the neighborhood they had helped to memorialize. The leather scene in San Francisco flourished until the AIDS crisis hit, killing thousands of locals and leading to the shuttering of many of the Soma bars and all of its bathhouses. Still, the San Francisco leather and kink communities have shown tremendous resilience and strength. Leather women, trans folk, and people of color and others have been increasingly honored and given their due. The community created the annual Folsom Street and Up Your Alley Fairs and honored its pioneers with the Leather History Alley. In 2018, the world's first leather and LGBTQ cultural district was formed south of Market. Leather culture is a pillar of San Francisco and will continue to play an important role in its future. Sir, yes, sir. And so that's the end of the story. Thanks again for uh, taking a look at it. I wanted to thank um, the people who made this, this poster project possible, which is the San Francisco Arts Commission, um, as, long, as well as um, uh, historical contributions from uh, Mike Caffey, Reese Bannon, Seth Eisen, and Gail Rubin. I also wanted to thank the uh, City of West Hollywood Arts Division for supporting this panel on LGBTQ plus history and comics through West Hollywood's One City, One Pride LGBTQ Arts Festival. Thank you.